Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do a book haul revisit. If you are unfamiliar, this is where I look back at previous book hauls from this month in history. I have three book hauls in the month of August to look back at, 2021, 2020, and 2019. As I do this, I try to assess how many of these books I have read, how many I still want to read, talk about any unhauls, and think about any books that I might want to give up and unhaul in the future. It's my way of examining how good I am at predicting what I'm actually going to read when I bring books into my library, and I'm trying to make myself a bit of a more intentional book purchaser. Two of these book hauls are on the smaller side. The last one is going to be really big. We're going to start with 2021 and work our way back through the past. Quick note, I am not going to spend a lot of time talking about the plots of these books, so if you would like more information about that, I'm going to encourage you to check out the links to the original book hauls, which will be in the description box down below. In those book hauls, I spend a lot of time talking about what the books are about. I read a little bit from the opening of each book and all of that. So if you want to learn more, check out the original book haul. I'm going to try to get through these as quickly as possible. So again, we're going to start with August of 2021. I got seven books. The first book is Rainbow Milk by Paul Mendez. This was a gift from Erica at the Broken Spine. And I constantly see this book because it goes on my bookshelf right over there. And while I am here working during the day, I constantly see it and I constantly think to myself, I need to read that book. So obviously that means I have not gotten around to it yet, but I very much still would like to and hope to at some point soon, hopefully by the end of the year. But we're going to see how that goes. That is the first book from August of 2021. The next book is The Abel McLaughlins by Margaret Wilson. This is part of my Pulitzer Prize project. Last year I discovered these Franklin Library editions. And actually I think this may have been the first one that I got. Actually, I don't think it was. Scarlet Sister Mary was the first one, and that is up here with all of my other Franklin Library editions. And because I loved it so much, I looked for others. And I so I have two Franklin Library editions that I got from last year. Haven't read it yet, but that wasn't the point. I'm going to get to it eventually as part of my Pulitzer Prize project. And it's just really pretty. If you need an example of why I'm really into these Franklin Library editions, they have those beautiful leather outsides with the gilt edges and detail, and they open with two-page illustration spreads, and they have other illustrations all the way through. And I am working my way through every Pulitzer Prize winner for fiction. So at some point, I will get to this one. I have not done it yet, but it was something of a library builder from the point of view that I don't have immediate plans to get to it, but I know I will at some point. The other one is Early Autumn by Lewis Bromfield. The later books in the Franklin Library series are a little bit harder to capture on film, but they're still just as beautiful as the rest of them. And again, here's the two-page spread that this one opens with. So like the Abel McLaughlins, this is part of my Pulitzer Prize project. I have not gotten to it, but I plan to at some point in the future. So for now, it's just a library builder and it's gonna sit here looking very pretty. And I'm okay with that. It's a nice background for my videos. And then we actually have two unhauls. The first one is Damnation Spring by Ash Davidson. I did read this book. I listened to it on audio last year. And if you follow along, you know I had a lot of difficulty as I was reading it. I was very concerned because there's a character in it that is, is a dog. And I was worried that something was going to happen to it. And that was kind of paralleling. It's It's been a year since we first found out that Guinness had a brain tumor. And when we found out, I was working my way through Damnation Spring, so I had a very hard time finishing it. I did revisit it and finish by the end of the year, but I had a very torturous journey through it. And I did really like the book. I thought it had a lot of flaws, but I did mostly like it. The thing is, as I was thinking about it, because I recently did a big unhaul and uh, had to fit a lot of stuff onto my shelves, I looked at it and I was thinking, do I like this enough to keep it on my shelf? Am I ever going to reread it? The answer was no. So I decided to get rid of it. So that's my very first unhaul for this video. I did ultimately listen to it on audio, actually. And the other one was Once There Were Wolves by Charlotte McConaughey. 
I was pretty excited about this one when I brought it into my library, and in the years since, I never really got any sense of urgency to get to it, and I was going through my shelves again about a month ago, trying to make room for a lot of other things and trying to make some tough calls, and I looked at it and I just thought to myself, what is the likelihood that I am going to get to this book anytime soon? And how interested in, am I in it? I haven't heard much about it in the years since it was released. And what I did hear was pretty mixed. So in reality, I didn't think I was very likely to get to it. And I don't talk a whole lot about Book of the Month Club because I'm not like affiliated with them in any way. I was just a member for a while. And one thing I have really noticed as I do these book haul revisits is that a lot of the time... I would get something from Book of the Month and never get around to reading it. So I actually suspended my membership back in June. And I'm going to wait and see. I'll think about it. I think I have until October to decide if I want to relaunch my membership. Odds are I'm just going to let it go. Um, because as I've been doing book haul revisits, I've found a lot of Book of the Month books that are just sitting on my shelf and I'm not getting to them. So that's just a quick overview of where I'm at with that. Something that is a little more successful from this August book haul that came from the book of the month was After Parties, Stories by Anthony Viasna. So this one I have not read, but I still want to read it. So at least this one is still on my radar. I've heard a lot of really good feedback about it, and other people have encouraged me to read it, so I would like to get to it at some point. This is one that I was really happy to bring into my library. And because there were success stories like this, where even though I haven't read it, I am still really looking forward to getting to it. It was a hard decision to let go of the membership, but I think it's going to probably be the right thing to do. Um, but anyway, I have not read After Parties yet. I would like to get to it at some point in the future. So I'm going to hold on to it and we'll see when I finally do get to it. Then we have Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. I have read this. I may have actually read this before I even hauled it. Like, I brought it into my library, read it immediately, and then by the time I hauled it, I had already read it. I believe that is what happened. I now have Volume 2 and Volume 4 on the shelf, but I have not read any further than Volume 2. I'm working my way through much slowly, and I did watch the TV series as well, so this was a success story. So, August of 2021, I brought in seven books to my library. So far, I have read two. That is Damnation Spring and Heartstopper. And Damnation Spring is one of two unhauls. Even though I read it, I just didn't think I was going to reread it, and I don't think I liked it enough to keep it on my shelf. I really needed space in the area of the alphabet where Davidson is, and it is a pretty thick book. So I decided to let it go, and it is what it is. Let's do August of 2020. The first two books I got in August of 2020 were inspired by the Booker Longlist from that year. Nervous Conditions by Tsitsi Dungaremga and This Mournable Body, also by Tsitsi Dungaremga. So this Mournable Body was longlisted for the Booker Prize in 2020. It was the third book in a trilogy that was begun with Nervous Conditions, which was published, I believe, in the early 90s or sometime in the 90s. It is copyright 1998, but also has a copyright from 1989. So I don't know what year it was officially published, but yeah, it, it, it was a trilogy that had been in the works for a long time. And I was really excited about it and immediately found a copy of it online. And then because I was so excited about it, I also found a used copy of Nervous Conditions because I figured I might as well work my way through the whole thing. And then that was like an immediate reaction to the longlist announcement. And then the thing that happened is I heard from people who had already read these books and I heard from people who started reading them as, because they were on, or because this mournable body was on the long list. And the feedback wasn't really great. So the sense of urgency pretty much immediately died. <laughs> and here I am two years later, having read neither of them. And I was smart enough to say, you know what, Greg, 
hold off on the second book in the series until you've at least tried Nervous Conditions and decided if you like it. Why I felt the need to jump and grab book three and not book two, I don't know. I think it was my first full year on booktube and I was really excitable about a lot of things. So I just got swept up in <laughs> the excitement of it and uh, got two of the books and now I have two books waiting instead of just the beginning of the series. It is what it is. I think nowadays I have much more tempered reactions to long lists and I'm much more likely to sort of wait and see what other people are saying about a book before I immediately go out and buy, make two purchases <laughs> based on that. So I do kind of wonder if I should hold on to these because again the feedback from people who have opinions of book that books that are very close to mine they've not really liked these all that much. So there's very likely a chance that if these are still here unread next year I'll be looking at an unhaul situation. But for now, I'm going to keep them. If you have feedback about Nervous Conditions or This Mournable Body or just the series in general, let me know in the comment section down below because I am wondering how likely I am to get to them based on feedback I have gotten about both so far. The Yield by Tara June Winch was a success story. I ended up reading it in April of last year as a buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac. And we both loved it. I can't remember if it was his favorite book of last year. It was certainly up there. It was one of my favorite books from last year, top five. I'll put a link to that video for my best books of last year in the description box down below if you would like to check it out. Really great book. I would absolutely recommend it. And I love the cover as well. And I think there's even an explanation in the book about what the cover means. And that is really fascinating as well. Great great book. So that is a success story, if nothing else. This one, Filthy Beasts by Kirkland Hamill, I really considered unhauling when I was going through my shelves about a month ago and really trying to make tough decisions about what I was going to do, because I don't know anybody who has read this, and it was recommended by a bookseller from a store I don't really go to anymore. But when I looked at the description of it, it sounded like something that was very me, or at least from like something I would be interested in maybe like 10 years ago. But when even if you're really interested in something about 10, 15 years ago, it still has appeal to you now sometimes. So I read the description, got carried away, bought it. And now here I am a year later, or two years later, and I have not gotten around to reading it. So I had really thought about getting rid of it and decided to hold on to it a little longer. I don't have any plans to get to it soon, but it is something that would definitely appeal to my interest. So I'm going to hold on to it for at least another year and see if I get around to it. If at this time next year I still have it and still have not read it, I might start thinking a little more harshly about whether or not I'm going to keep it. But for now, it, it will be here or it will continue to be here, and we will see how that goes. Uh, the next one is Luster by Raven Lalani. This was a victim of making a very tough call when I was trying to make space because the L's and the M's on my bookshelves are perpetually cluttered, and I needed a lot of room in that area. I did read Luster, and I liked, I liked it, a lot in certain areas, and I thought there were certain things about it that were really frustrating. And when I thought about it, I think the things I found frustrating about it would keep me from ever rereading it. So I made a tough call to get rid of it. And I, I admit, this one I feel a little bad about. I probably should have held on to it, but I just don't think I'm ever going to reread it. And although I found a lot of aspects of it interesting. I also found parts of it frustrating. So that is why I unhauled it. But I did read it. So there's at least that. And then the next book uh, is The Death of Vivek Oji by Okweke Ameze. This is a book of the month one that I am actually going to keep around. I am still interested in this one. I've heard a lot of really great feedback about this book. I think I'm much more likely to try it on audio. I believe I am on hold uh, on Libby 
to get an audio copy of it. I've been on hold for a while and I haven't gotten it yet. So I, at some point, maybe this year, I will get that hold available and I'll probably listen to this. But uh, still waiting on that. And I'll hold on to the physical copy of it until then because I would still very much like to read this book. I've not read an Aquica Emeze book and I would really like to because I hear great things about them as an author and I think they would be very interesting to me. The next one is Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart, which was also long-listed and then shortlisted for the Booker Prize. I can't remember if this mournable body was shortlisted. I think it was, but I could be wrong about that. Shuggy Bane was definitely shortlisted ultimately because it's the book that went on to win the Booker Prize in 2020. And I read it that fall as a buddy read with Amelia Reads, and we both just loved it. It was one of my top three favorite books of 2020. I'll put a link to that video in the description box down below as well. I really loved this book. It is a painful book in a lot of ways, but it's also a very tender book in a lot of other ways. And even though I did not grow up in Glasgow, I found enough parallels to my own childhood that it felt like it perfectly synced up with my own emotional baggage about my mother. And it was a very cathartic reading experience in terms of that. So yeah, I will definitely keep this on my shelf. And then the final book that I hauled in August of 2020 is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, which I had actually already read at the time I purchased a copy of it. I loved it that much. This was another book that was in my top three books of 2020. I think both of them ultimately lost out to Song of Solomon. I believe that was the year that really I could put nothing else in number one. But, so but Song of Solomon, it's a great book. And these were really solid second and third place books. Any other year, they could have easily been number one. But uh, that's the way it worked out. Loved Hamnet and wanted to make sure I had a copy of it uh, for my own shelves. So here it is. To wrap up August of 2020, I brought eight books into my library. I read four of them and I unhauled one. That takes us back to August of 2019. This is a big book haul. There are, I think, 16, yes, yeah, 16 books. I counted earlier because I'm not good at math on the fly. So we have a lot to get through on this one. A lot of joy, a lot of success, a lot of disappointment, aka the perfect book haul revisit. Let's start with a success story, though. Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo. This was a book that was on the Booker long list in 2019. Ultimately, it went on to tie for the win with Margaret Atwood's The Testaments. I'll put my reaction video to that in the description box down below as well. It had immediately jumped out to me as something that I wanted to read from the long list, and then the more I heard about it throughout the shortlist process and all that, I definitely wanted to get to it. I did. I can't remember when, but at some point... I did get to it, and I did really enjoy it, and now I have one other book by Bernardino Baristo on my bookshelf. Can't wait to get to it, and I would. there's another one that I'd be really interested in as well. I have been very happy to see her emerge as a big figure in the literary world, particularly in the UK. I am so happy to see how she has succeeded, especially since she ultimately had to share the spotlight for the win with Margaret Atwood in what was a bizarre situation. So I'm happy that I read this book. I did enjoy it, and I look forward to reading more of Bernardine Evaristo in the future. And then we have a couple of library builders, so things that I have not gotten to yet, but I purchased them so I would have them in my library, and whenever I eventually get to them, they will be there, ready and waiting for me. I call that a library builder. The first one is Song of the Loon by Richard Amory. In 2019, I discovered these Little Sisters classics, from Arsenal Pulp Press. It's this really great initiative that they did. I don't believe they do it anymore, but they wanted to find LGBTQ classics that either had gone out of print or were just in danger of being forgotten, and they wanted to bring them back. Song of the Loon is one of them. You can see the original cover right there. This was actually a best-selling LGBTQ book, as you know, again, you really have to pay attention to that um, qualifier. It was a best-selling LGBTQ book in the 60s, around the time of Stonewall. When I read the Stonewall Riots 
it referenced this book. There was a gay bookstore in the area of Stonewall, and this was its best-selling title at the time. So I actually found the Little Sisters Classics by looking into this book and ordering this copy of it. Have not gotten around to it, but I would like to at some point in the future. The Little Sisters classic that I'm more likely to try to get to first is actually Blackbird by Larry Duplichan. Uh, there's another one that's really, really short that's on the other side, but it doesn't fit into this book haul, and I would be really likely to get to that one as well. Um, the reason I'm more likely to get to this one is that it is by a black queer author telling a black queer story, and I think that would be really interesting. So there's another Little Sisters classic that I am happy to have in my library for whenever I get around to it. And here's another one, Patience and Sarah by Isabel Miller. You can see all of them have roughly the same look. The inset, I believe, is the original cover of the book, and it has supplemental material in here. If you can find these, I don't believe Arsenal Pulp Press is making them anymore, but if you can find copies of these out there, I would highly recommend them, and I'm really excited to get to a lot of the ones that I have at some point. The next one is something, an author that I'm really astonished and ashamed that I have not read yet, Paul Monette, Becoming a Man. This is Half a Life Story. I hadn't even heard of Paul Monette until I think 2019, and I can't remember who first put him on my radar, but the person who talks about him regularly and makes me feel ashamed that I have not read him is Jen the Librarian. Uh, she is a big fan of Paul Monette's. Joel did read a Paul Monette book last year, and it was really sad, um, but he loved it, so I'm really looking forward to getting around to a Paul Monette book myself at some point, and library builder all the way. I have it here when I'm ready to get around to it. I don't think it's going to be this year because this is not the time for me to be reading a sad book. Especially one that really heavily deals with death and dying and all of that. If you follow along, you know if you why that is. If you don't follow along, um, we lost a dog, my dog Guinness, in June to a brain tumor. So, it's, it's a tough process dealing with the grief for that. And I, because of that, I don't think it's going to be this year that I finally get around to Palmo Net, But I will at some point, just not right now. Definitely not right now. The next one is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. The original version that I hauled was actually not this little pocket edition of it, which I remember I was carrying around without the dust jacket, and someone thought I was reading the Bible, because I get, it's just a tiny little book with the gilt edges, and that's what they thought. Funny, 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 funny. But uh, from that, you can tell, yes, I did read this book. I did a buddy read with Britta Bowler. Again, this was not the original edition that I got, got for my library, but what happened is, as Britta and I were doing our buddy read of this, I realized that she had a lot more book left and mine was done. So there are two sections in here. And in the United States, you can frequently find ones that only have the first part. They were published separately and then most of the time they're published together. But somehow I had accidentally purchased one of the ones that only have the first section of the book. So I had to run out, get a copy that had both sections, and that's where this one came in. And now I got rid of the one that only had half, and this is the one that I have now. So it's standing in for the Little Women that I hauled in August of 2019, because the whole intention was to read the whole thing. So that's where I'm going to just put that book. And then the next one is Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout. I have not read this since I hauled it, but I had already read it when I brought it into my library. In 2019, I decided to do my Pulitzer Prize project. And I purchased a lot of books that I was able to find in a used bookstore over the next few months. And this is one of those. Because I remember liking the writing a lot when I read this. I read it shortly after it won the Pulitzer Prize. And I didn't really like the book itself. But I think this is going to be a very interesting book to revisit with the hindsight of the last decade plus. And where I'm at in my life now. I think I will probably have a very different response to it now than I did at the time when I was in my 20s and maybe a little less familiar with some of the things that Olive Kitteridge grapples with in the book.
So I'm looking forward to revisiting this as part of my Pulitzer Prize project. I did not have any sense of urgency to get to it in 2019, obviously. So it continues to be here, and I am actually thinking about doing this sometime soon for my Pulitzer project, but I have some ideas for what I want to do next, and it's not one of them. So it'll it's a library builder. It will be here when I'm ready for it as part of that project. And then I had gotten Away in the World by V.S. Naipaul. I got it because it was a dollar at my local used bookstore. Actually, to be fair, so was Olive Kitteridge. Uh, no, this one was $3, actually. So a couple of the books that we're about to go into, I got really cheap. So this is a really big book haul, but there is a good chunk of books in the middle that I got for under $4 individually. So this one I got for $3. And the Naipaul book I got for a dollar. And then the thing is, over the last few years, I really started to think about, am I ever going to get around to reading this one? If I pick up a book by Naipaul, and I would like to, it's going to be half a life. So I ultimately unhauled Away in the World. And it is what it is. The next book in my August 2019 book haul was Breath Eyes Memory by Edwidge Danticat. This one was two dollars at my local used bookstore. I have still never read an, a Danticat book and I really really need to get around to it. This is one of the ones that people talk about the most. Obviously it has been blessed by Oprah for whatever that means to you. Really looking forward to getting to this at some point but I have not yet. And then I got another one that is part of my Pulitzer Prize project and just a library builder for that. This one I still have the sticker on it. It was three dollars. So this is The Stone Diaries by Carol Shields. I read this when I was about 20 or 21 years old and did not like it. But, kind of like Olive Kitteridge, I think if I read it now, I would respond to it much better. I think at 20 or 21, I didn't have the perspective on the world that would let me understand what Carol Shields is doing with this book. And I'm hopefully here now. We'll see. Maybe I'll read it again and I won't like it. But because I found this cheap copy at my local used bookstore, it's here, ready for me to revisit it as part of my Pulitzer Prize project. And then I had a found a copy of The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton for a dollar. This is not a Pulitzer Prize winner, but I did read The Age of Innocence before I decided to embark on my Pulitzer Prize project. Loved it and want to read more Edith Wharton, House of Mirth seems like the next place to go, but I haven't gotten around to it yet, and I will at some point. So it will be here when I am ready. Another Pulitzer winner I got from my used bookstore. This one for $1.25, A Summons to Memphis by Peter Taylor. I have not read this one at any point in the past, and I am intrigued by it, but I think I'm going to wait on it for a little bit because... I have read two books from the 1980s for my Pulitzer Project, and I want to try to get to some other decades before I go back into that territory. Um, in fact, I think the ones that I have done were Lonesome Dove, which won for 1986, and Beloved, which won for 1988, and A Summons to Memphis would be sandwiched directly between them. It was the 1987 winner, if I remember correctly. So I will get to it at some point, but I want to try to get to some other periods in Pulitzer history before I do. Now, while I was at the used bookstore picking up all of those, I saw that they had a copy of Ohio by Stephen Markley. This one still has the sticker on and it was $8, so it was a little more than the others. But I've heard so many really good things about this book that I grabbed it. I just haven't gotten around to reading it yet. And I continue to hear really great things about this book. So I'm hoping I will get to it at some point. It's not the best edition of it. It's a little beaten up, but that's fine. It'll be here when I am ready to get to it at whatever point I eventually do. The next one I got for a dollar at my library, Ironweed by William Kennedy. This is another Pulitzer Prize winner for my Pulitzer Prize project. I have not read it at any point in the past. It is a movie tie-in. I usually try to avoid movie tie-ins. However, I needed to get a copy of this book. It was there and it was a dollar. So beggars can't be choosers. So I got it and I will get to it at some point as part of my project. I believe this is another Pulitzer winner from the 80s though. So like A Summons to Memphis, it's going to have to wait until I have visited some other books first. And then actually this one is one that I also got from my library for a dollar. Rabbit is Rich by John Updike. This is another Pulitzer winner from the 80s. So it's going to have to wait a little bit. And I 
am not really looking forward to reading John Updike, especially since this one is frustrating, because John Updike is one of the few people who has won two Pulitzer Prizes for fiction. Both of them are in his series of books about Harry Rabbit Angstrom, and one of his Pulitzer Prize winners was the last book in the series. And I have told myself that as I work my way through, when I encounter a book that is a sequel or part of a series, I will try to read the books that were published before it. And because one of the Pulitzer Prize winners in this series is the last one, I need to read four John Updike books. That's a little frustrating, but what's really annoying about it is that I'm not really looking forward to reading John Updike, especially the Rabbit books but it's going to be what it's going to be. Rabbit is Rich, I believe, is the second one in the series. I could be wrong about that. It might be the third. But um, it's also the one that, if I remember correctly, has some of the more toxic depictions of women when it talks about Rabbit's wife. Um, and one of the reasons I'm really not looking forward to reading a John Updike book. So I'll get to it at some point, but I'm not looking forward to it by any means. Uh, and then the final book for the August 2019 book haul was Dominicana by Angie Cruz. I admit, when I was really taking a hard look at my shelves about a month ago and trying to decide what to get rid of, I really thought about unhauling this. I've heard some pretty mixed things about it since it was published, but I've heard enough good things that I decided to hold on to it. However, if it is still here in a year and I haven't read it, I think it's going to be the victim of a really harsh culling because inevitably I'm going to need more room and have to start making some tough decisions again. And this was almost a victim already. So if it's still here next year, it may fall victim. But if you have thoughts about it, let me know in the comment section down below. I have no plans to get to it this year. So that puts it in the danger zone right there. And that's my big book haul from August 2019. But again, a lot of these were library builders and ones that I got really cheaply, so I don't feel too badly about them. So that was 16 books. I've read four. Two of them had been read before I brought them into my library, and I've only unhauled one, but there's at least one other that's on the cusp. Overall, from the last three Augusts, I brought 31 books into my library. That's a lot. I've only read 10. That's not great. But I have plans to get to many, many more of them. And I have unhauled five. And there are some more that may very well be unhauled in the future. But a lot of them are, again, library builders, things I got cheap, and part of my bullet surprise project. So things I will be getting to at some point. Not a whole lot of bad decisions here, but there are some bad decisions. So ultimately, I can't feel too bad, but I can take the notes especially with this mortable body and nervous conditions and sort of temper enthusiasm until I know I really want to commit to reading like three books in a series before purchasing two of them. So if you have thoughts about any of these books, recommendations, if you have recommendations for books that I can maybe get rid of or not worry about reading at any point, or if you have recommendations for things that I could also add to the list, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, I really appreciate your time and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.